Hello, hello everyone. My name is Navia Lee. I am presenting to you my session. Um, welcome to the San Bernardino County Superintendent of Schools Parent Summit 2020. It's entitled You Plus Google Equals Happily Ever After because that's everyone's goal, right? To have this perfect union with Google and to figure out how to master the features for Google. <laughs> Let's get into it. So I am going to turn off my webcam. I just wanted to make a more personal um, connection with you. So I have listed here what I have earned in the technology world. I definitely am interested in technology. I enjoy seeing how it can augment the work that we do as educators. So I am a Google level one and level two educator. And then I also use Screencastify. Um, and I'm a Google trainer as well. So Speakeasy the Navia Way is my LLC that I created a couple of years back simply because I wanted a platform to be able to do things like what I'm doing today with you um, to just share knowledge that I have, what I've learned, what I think that the community should know to support causes and individuals, businesses that are, are doing things that I believe in. I offer public speaking. Um, I am a Google certified trainer. I do that through my LLC as well. So that's what Speakeasy the Navia Way is. I'm also the district lead counselor in Rialto Unified School District. So I just wanted to um, share with you my alma mater is using a feature called Google Earth. So Google Earth um, is part of the Google family that you can use just having a Google account. So you will see here, <clears throat> excuse me. You will see here that I graduated from the University of Southern California, USC. Fight on if we have any Trojans that are um, in the in the meeting with us. Um, this is just a pretty cool, I thought, feature of Google um, that lets you see the neighborhood around colleges. So if you're having conversations, or I should say when you're having conversations with your child or children about the schools that they want to attend or anywhere that they want to go, um, you can see the community, you see the 110 freeway there, you see USC, if you're familiar with the area, that all um, brings back memories to you. So I am from the Inland Empire, I grew up here, so um, I definitely enjoy um, or I appreciate San Bernardino County Superintendent of Schools being a product um, therein. I actually graduated from A.B. Miller. So now we're back in the IE. The University of Redlands is where I received my master's degree. Again, Google Earth allows you to be able to look a little bit more intently um, mm. at some of the buildings around. And then you can just play around with it if you want to look at it a little bit more. And then lastly, I am in school now at the University of Laverne to get my doctorate. So I am studying um, in my second year to get the EDD in organizational leadership. I thought that was a pretty cool feature from Google that I just wanted to share with you. So our journey to you plus Google equals happily ever after includes sharing or reviewing Google's mission, um, speaking Google's language, increasing knowledge of the G Suite platform. And for those who may be thinking she is talking a lot about Google, <laughs> I definitely want to encourage you to hang in there with us because we have something for those that may be in districts that aren't using the G Suite platform but you can still um, take away something from the presentation, hopefully. We're going to be talking about the significance of digital citizenship and why it is important and you should know what it is if you're not already familiar with the term. I created a reference page for students and parents to use um, during this time. Um, I have a scenario that hopefully will serve as um, a source of discussion for parents, um, for students, and for just reflection as we talk about digital citizenship. And then I have a video on tips for distance learning.
So the mission statement is to organize the world information and make it universally accessible and useful. So in my professional career, this resonates with me because I feel like that's my responsibility as a school counselor. I want to impart knowledge and information. So whether it be um, college and career knowledge or social emotional learning or um, how to matriculate through high school, all of those things, my goal is to make it universally accessible so that everyone can get it. And then also so that it's useful. So I, as an educator, have your child for a couple of years. You have them for a lifetime. Of course, they won't always be so much of your responsibility um, when they're over 18, but it still is something that you want to make sure that the information that they get is something that they can use that can help them to be responsible, gainfully employed, all of those things. So that's their mission statement. And then I wanted to review some key terms. Um, so we're looking at the Google Glossary. So Chromebook, you may have heard this term um, as districts and school sites are distributing Chromebooks as a way to um, make sure the students can access the G Suite platform or whether you're using Zoom or what have you. So um, a Chromebook is basically Google's laptop that you can um, use and access. The G Suite for Education has all of these systems. You can access Gmail, Classroom, Dots, Meet, Drive, all of those things that's considered the G Suite family and platform. So um, you can join them as even even without being a part of a school's domain, you can join them. But you do have to schools usually will restrict, of course, for safety reasons, those who have access. But that's what's part of the G Suite for Education. Um, Google Classroom, which I encourage parents to sign up for Google Summaries so you can get a review of missing work upcoming work, class activities, all of those things. So you don't have to be, you know, in the dark when it comes to what exactly is going on in your child's virtual classroom. You can be aware. So you can ask for a classroom um, summary as a guardian. And then Google Meet is the online platform um, where there's, there's video conferencing. So your your school may be using Zoom or GoToMeeting or whatever video conferencing platform, Google's answer for that is Google Meet. So we have docs, sheets, or slides. Um, this is used as a collaborative tool. So if students are doing presentations or anything like that, they may type on a document so that um, it can be seen by their classmates. So all of those features can, can do that. And we're actually gonna talk more about slides um, later. Um, Google Forms is what can be um, assigned to your child as a test or a quiz. So, and you may have even taken these as a parent where you are able to fill in information. It creates a spreadsheet for the, the G Suite user to store information. So um, if a survey is sent out and they're asking your opinion on something, it may be sent in a Google form. And that's what that is, just a, an assessment tool to, to gather data. Google Drive is, as is described here, it's your child's virtual backpack. So they can take it everywhere they go um, because it's online, it's in the cloud. Um, so they can even download the app for sheets for docs for um, drive so that they can access it later. So your child, if they create a document and they want to be able to retrieve it, they can do it anywhere um, and they can even make it available offline if there isn't the internet access, but they can retrieve it so that they can, um, you know, continue to work on it and they can share it with classmates in real time. Google Calendar is just as it appears. Um, it's a Google Calendar where you can share events with those outside of the G Suite family. Google Sites is where you can have um, maybe your child is doing a portfolio or something where you want them to store um, any type of information that they can display later. Google Sites is a good resource for that. Um, assignments is something that your district would have to activate so that it can be accessed later. 
but that's something that is available for teachers to be able to do faster and um, a simpler way to distribute, analyze, and grade students' work. Socratic is a homework app um, where you can your child can use their voice or camera to ask questions if they find diff, um, concepts difficult. Um, similarly, Lens, it allows you to explore things around you in a new way. Um, Google search, you may have, I have a, a five-year-old who's in, uh, not, I was about to say distance learning, but who's in a dual language immersion program and she's learning Spanish. So she often asks Google, okay, Google, how do you say table in Spanish? So that's what a Google search is. Anything that you want to learn about, um, then you can use that to search those concepts and then read along it engages learning for young children so i know oftentimes in education we will use terminology and not everyone is necessarily familiar with what those terms are so um, you will have a copy of this um, google slide presentation so you can refer to it and access all the links anytime i do have a document i put the link at the bottom so you can reference it at your discretion. Here is a video, um, quick video, um, talking about a tech toolkit for families and guardians. A huge part of a student's educational journey is engagement between their families and teachers. Keeping parents and guardians informed and included helps build strong relationships and connections for everyone involved in a child's academic career. A big piece of that is understanding the technology that students are using in school. And a lot of that technology comes from Google for Education. G Suite for Education is a free suite of communication and collaboration tools, including Gmail, Google Classroom, Google Docs, and Google Drive, that help make learning possible anywhere, anytime, on any device. I know in my classroom, students complete all their work in G Suite. I can leave comments for feedback, students collaborate on their projects, and together we can see all the revisions of their work. It allows us all to learn and grow. This video series will explain Google for Education's products, including G Suite and Chromebooks. We'll talk about accessibility and security features in Google's educational products, and we'll talk through some guidelines, tech tips, and best practices for family engagement. We know that families have a lot of specific questions about the products their kids are using. So if you look down to the description box of each video or the bottom of the page, you can find a link to the Global Educator Group YouTube channel. And that's where educators around the world have created playlists specifically to answer those questions. And to find out even more about Google for Education products and programs, you can also follow along on Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, or our help and community centers. So as I mentioned, I did include the link so you can access the videos, the whole list of videos at a later time. So we are going to go through um, some of the features in G Suite Classroom Slides and Docs so you can see what your child actually sees from their end. So you or your child, anytime they join a Google Classroom, they receive a Google code and I'm giving you the opportunity to join my classroom. So you can um, go to the waffle here, open up Classroom from your personal Google account and join using that code. <clears throat> So you can, where it'll say join class, it'll have a plus at the top right, and you can join the class using that code. Your child will get a code or they can copy the link. Or they'll get an email directly from your child's teacher. So from the child's perspective, I joined on my personal account. I created a, a sandbox of sorts. And so your child will be assigned this, what resources would be hopeful, helpful for you to have during the time of distance learning? They would open it up and they would go. So they're creating a, a slide, Google slideshow 
to say, okay, I want financial support. Or I want more internet access. They can insert an audio, a video, audio file, um, an image, all of these things. They can play around with it. They can manipulate the color, um, all of these things. And you can see it's saved in real time. So whether they're using the app or whether they're using a computer, it's saved there. They go in. It has the due date here. They turn it in. So now it's there for the teacher to retrieve and to record. They can, they, they can unsubmit it as long as the teacher has not collected it. So when we talk about the importance of digital citizenship, I have a video that I would like to show you that talks about that. So common sense is a wealth of information. I visit them often um, and refer parents to them often. Now we're going to go over a what would you do type scenario. Um, this is from the website I have listed here. Um, there are plenty of situations that students find themselves in, whether it be cyberbullying or what have you, that the parents have to end up paying the consequence of the child's um decisions so i just want to make sure that it's a conversation that you're having with your child so right now if you can just take 60 seconds to reflect or to talk with a peer that may be there or with your child um, on this scenario you're in a google classroom and see a comment by a cool friend who is in the top sports team his comment criticizes a teammate i the student consider commenting on the post in agreement what are potential consequences. So take 60 seconds and reflect on potential consequences. So hopefully you were able to think about um, how this may impact your image with the rest of your classmates, because this here is in Google Classroom. Um, you're aligning yourself with the quote unquote cool friend. How will that impact your interactions with the other teammate? Um, it's just a host of things. If there is prior conflict with these two, now you've identified yourself as having chosen a side. Um, there are a lot of things that could go wrong just by simply agreeing and commenting publicly. So it's just something to be mindful of, um, a conversation to have with your, your child about their decisions and how they govern themselves online. So while we're distance learning, um, it helps to be able to have information all in the same place. So I have created this document that you can access from the Google slide, it will force you to make a copy. So this copy will be your own. I won't have it in my drive. Um, and you can 
keep track of all the information that you need for your child, especially if, if you have multiple children and their distance learning information. So you would list the name of their school, um, their your child's name, email address, the platform you're using for instruction. Is it Zoom? Is it Google Classroom? Google Meet? All of those things so that you can be aware of the platform and just keep record of things that you need to know while, you're, while your child is doing distance learning. This video is talking about tips that you can incorporate as a parent and even a child um, in creating a routine and being successful as a distance learner. Here are six tips to help parents keep their kids motivated during online learning. Number one, establish a structure and routine. Sticking to a schedule provides the stability kids need to keep plugging away. Plus, it minimizes their instincts to go rogue. When expectations are set, it's more likely they'll be met. Number two, praise effort. Now, more than ever, taking notice of and commenting positively on how your kid is growing and progressing can really give them forward momentum. Number three, break up the day. If you have some control over when kids do their schoolwork, mix things up a little. Consider letting them have a slower paced morning and then tackling assignments after lunch. Number four, check in regularly. Don't make assumptions about how things are going with your kid. Instead, see how they're holding up, ask how they feel, and figure out what you can do to support them. Number five, be willing to experiment. If a kid is struggling with reading, try an audiobook. If math is too boring, do the problems on a whiteboard or outside using sidewalk chalk. A change of scenery can do wonders for a kid's motivation. And number six, adjust expectations. If we've learned anything during this crisis, it's to expect the unexpected. Kids will need time to adjust to the new learning environment. So remember to empathize, celebrate the little victories, and start tomorrow with fresh eyes. For more advice and top picks to fit your family, so visit us at commonsensemedia.org. Here are six toolkit. Um, we're going to visit their website now, one of their web pages. It talks about a back to or it provides a back to school guide for families. Um, it talks about equity and social justice. So right now we have so much going on from our wildfires to um, social justice issues and our students are going through a lot. So connecting them with resources and other students and opportunities and ways to process everything that's going on can all be found through Common Sense Media. Also, there is a virtual college fair that you can sign up for that is free. And um, it happens on September 24th. So depending on when you view this broadcast, you may or may not have missed the live session, but you may be able to catch something on demand. And so I would just pay attention to the San Bernardino County um, Superintendent of Schools website. So your school site or your district may have a parent resource center that you can refer to. So um, that can be a hub of information to let you know upcoming events, what's going on, what your district is currently um, offering for parents. Even if it's school side council, um, your ELAC, your APAC, any group, any opportunity that you can get involved, whether it be just reading an email, even if you can't attend the virtual meetings, um, just make sure that you're informed as much as you can and get involved. I encourage that. I mentioned the internet contract. So this is something I found online um, where it just encourages discussion between you and your child of what is appropriate um, when the computer is not in use, it will be stored so that they can have expectations of how to maintain the equipment, how to be responsible digital citizens. And so you would child, you would child, you would sign it and your child would sign it. A guide for parents. Um, that addresses digital well-being. So we have had so many um, virtual meetings and just like you're joining virtually now, um, how do you protect your well-being digitally? Um, because you still need the, the information and definitely we're still moving forward um, even with all of our challenges, but we have to be mindful to protect ourselves so that we can be our best selves to present to our children and for ourselves. Google for Education Family Tech offers a frequently asked questions 
Um, so you can refer to that. It talks about different things as far as internet, Wi-Fi access, different things around Google. So I encourage you to visit that page also. And that is it for my session. Hopefully you were able to take away something that you can use as a parent, you can use um, in using in um, utilizing G Suite features. Um, and I appreciate your time. Feel free to email me at enlightenment at speakeasytnw.org. If you have suggestions of what I can add to this presentation to make it better in the future, if you have questions about anything that I talked about, and I definitely welcome feedback on your take of the presentation. Thank you so much. Bye.